You're always saying you're cold, so I set up a bonfire in the yard for you. Go warm yourself up there. Freezing from the cold, my mother-in-law pointed to the backyard visible from the window. Oh, what's that? I followed her pointing finger, and the sight made me collapse in despair. My name is Rosetta, a 27-year-old working housewife. I work part-time at a nearby supermarket. My husband, Andy, is an office worker and is 29, two years older than me. We have a one-year-old son named Daniel. About a year before Daniel was born, we started living with Andy's family. Andy's father had passed away before our marriage, and since his mother was living alone, we decided to live together to save money for our child. From then on, the subtle jabs from my mother-in-law increased. After giving birth, I took a break from work to focus on Daniel, but she would say, I can take care of Daniel. Why don't you work outside? Isn't it normal for a daughter-in-law to work when living together? Yet you're so lazy living here. I had gained weight after Daniel's birth, and she would scold me, saying, You're getting fatter because you're lazy. So despite feeling unwell, I started working again. However, I wanted to take care of Daniel, so I didn't work full-time. But my mother-in-law would say, Can't you work more? I explained, I could, but Daniel is still young, and I want to spend more time with him. Oh, are you saying you're not satisfied with me taking care of him? I raise Andy. I can raise a child better than you, who got sick right after giving birth. Just increase your work hours. I was overwhelmed by my mother-in-law's attitude, but I told Andy, she wants me to work more, but I don't want to reduce my time with Daniel. Can you talk to her? Mom knows better about raising kids. You're just working part-time, right? We're living here to save money, so just do as she says. Plus, you haven't lost your post-pregnancy weight. Andy mocked my weight and told me to work more. One day, my mother-in-law called my workplace and asked them to increase my hours. The part-time leader at the supermarket was her friend, so my hours were increased. I couldn't oppose the decision. When I got home, I had to cook for my mother-in-law and Andy, clean the house, and even clean up after my mother-in-law's tea parties with her friends. I hardly had time for Daniel. Leave Daniel to me. You should focus on work and house chores. You haven't lost any weight, have you? It's unsightly, my mother-in-law kept making such remarks. But when Daniel made a mess or cried at night, she'd say, You're his mother. Handle it. Can't you even discipline him properly? Don't neglect Daniel when he's in trouble, Mom. I said one day after cleaning the yard as my mother-in-law had instructed. Andy noticed me and said, Why are you so dirty? Don't come into the house like that. I was cleaning the yard as mother-in-law told me. I do all the housework while she just holds Daniel all day and doesn't do any chores, I retorted, unable to hold back. Don't criticize mom, you're not doing much either, can you please go? Andy looked annoyed and pointed towards the other room without making eye contact with me. That was the moment I decided to divorce him. Most of my salary went to household expenses, but I started recording my mother-in-law and Andy's words on my phone and kept a diary of daily events. One winter day, I asked Andy for some money to buy winter clothes. Winter clothes? Wear what you wore before. You earn so little yet want luxuries. The old ones don't fit. I need new ones. You gain weight again. Unbelievable. Andy threw a $50 bill at me. This should be enough for a few clothes. Thanks. I knew $50 would only get me one piece of outerwear, but I was preparing for a divorce and waiting for the right moment to leave Andy's family home. So, I gratefully accepted the money and bought a down jacket on my way home from work. However, the next day, I faced a shocking situation. I couldn't find my new down jacket anywhere. I asked my mother-in-law, who was relaxing in the living room, have you seen my down jacket? Oh, I thought you didn't need it anymore, so I threw it away. What? I just bought it yesterday. Oh, did you? I put it in the shed outside. Go check. I rushed to the shed only to find the jacket mixed with the trash. I picked it up and tried to clean it outside in the freezing winter, but it still smelled. I knew if I brought it inside, my mother-in-law and Andy would complain, so I hand-washed it late at night. The next day, I realized my mother-in-law had done something even worse. I hung my still wet jacket out to dry on the balcony of my bedroom before going to work. When I returned home after work, I noticed that all the drawers on the shelf containing my clothes were empty. My clothes were all gone. I ran to my mother-in-law and asked, where are my clothes? You bought new ones, right? So I turned your old dirty clothes into rags. Now you can clean the house with them. I checked the cleaning closet and found rags made from my clothes. 
I also noticed my jacket, which was still drying outside, was gone. You're always saying you're cold, so I made a bonfire for you in the yard. Before I knew it, my mother-in-law was standing at the entrance to my bedroom, smiling slightly at me. When I checked the garden she had pointed to, I saw a fire being lit in the fire pit. I looked outside and saw my jacket's remains flying in the wind. You burned my clothes. How am I supposed to survive this winter? I exclaimed. You're chubby, so you'll be fine, my mother-in-law retorted, smirking as she walked away. Speechless and shaking with anger, I grabbed my diary and phone, wrapped Daniel in my only coat, and ran out of Andy's house in just a t-shirt. It was snowing heavily. A neighbor, who didn't get along with my mother-in-law and had been worried about me since I moved in with Andy's family, found me and drove me to my parents' house an hour away. This neighbor had seen me lose weight and understood my situation despite Andy and his friends always telling me I was overweight. When I arrived, my mom panicked at my attire. Why are you dressed like that? Is it hot in the car? Are you sick? I had to run away from Andy's house. They turned all my clothes into rags and even burned my new jacket. I've been collecting evidence for a favorable divorce, but I felt my life was in danger, so I fled with Daniel wrapped in a coat. Daniel was peacefully asleep. I was so relieved that my mother-in-law didn't take him from me that I couldn't help but cry. Seeing my distress, my mother quickly contacted my father and a certain individual. The next day, responding to my mother's call, Andy's grandmother, whom I'll call Grandma, arrived at our home. It turns out my father and Andy's father were old friends, and Grandma and my dad still kept in touch. Andy and I met and married because of this connection. Before our marriage, Andy was genuinely kind and friendly to my parents, but over time, influenced by the constant harassment from his mother, he began to treat me coldly. When I explained everything with evidence, Grandma was even more furious than my parents. She immediately contacted a lawyer and arranged for my divorce. A few days later, after leaving Daniel with my sister who lives nearby, my parents' grandma, the lawyer, and I visited Andy's family home. As we arrived, my mother-in-law stormed up shouting, Where's Daniel, you kidnappers? But when grandma stepped forward, she retorted, Who are you calling a kidnapper, you money grubber? Andy, who seemed to have taken time off work, joined us and we all sat down to discuss. We're here to discuss Rosetta and Andy's divorce, custody of Daniel, and the sale of this property, the lawyer began. What do you mean by selling the land? It's dad's ancestral home, and mom inherited it. You can't just sell it. Andy laughed mockingly at the lawyer's words. The building might be inherited by Andy's mother, but the land belongs to Andy's father's family. We've been overlooking the unpaid land rent out of goodwill, but now we'll be claiming the overdue amount and selling the land, the lawyer explained handing over a document detailing the unpaid rent for several years since Andy's father passed away. Seeing the amount, my mother-in-law exclaimed, How can we pay this all of a sudden? Grandma silenced her with a stern quiet. She continued, We've been notifying you every month. You chose to ignore it. And more importantly, make amends for how you've treated Rosetta. Rosetta's accusations? She's my daughter-in-law. Why should it concern anyone else? Besides, Rosetta is probably just making things up. She always lied to get out of chores and work, my mother-in-law insisted, shouting at Grandma. I've never lied. Just because you think I'm overweight, you've made me do all the work and chores, taking away my time with my child. Do you know how hard it was to be told to wear just a t-shirt in the depth of winter? You've been spreading these lies to everyone, claiming I'm eager to slack off, I said. The mother-in-law smirked, but when I played back the recorded snide remarks from her and Andy on my phone, she exclaimed, That's fabricated. I then rushed to the closet, grabbed a rag made from my clothes, and slammed it on the table. How do you explain this? My clothes have been turned into rags just like in the recording. Rosetta, enough. Maybe mom went a bit too far. But it's because you've always been lazy and just gaining weight. Reflect on your actions before blaming others, Andy said. Excuse me, are you blind? Since coming here, I've lost at least 22 pounds. The reason my clothes don't fit isn't because I gained weight, but because I lost it so rapidly. Everyone but you and your mother is concerned about how thin I've become, I retorted. At my words, Andy seemed to realize for the first time how much weight I had lost. I regret ever leaving Rosetta in your care, my father said, clenching his fists on his lap and glaring at Andy and the others. I'm holding back my anger towards you right now, but I've mostly taken care of Daniel. Rosetta can't possibly handle him. 
We'll even go to court to ensure we live with Daniel. That's fine, but courts usually favor the mother. And do you think they'll trust people who didn't even notice Rosetta's weight loss with Daniel? Can you afford a lawyer and court fees? I'll also claim alimony and land rent for this house. The lawyer calmly reiterated the situation. The mother-in-law seemed to realize they couldn't afford it. This is so unfair. Who's being unfair? You both bullied Rosetta and even tried to take Daniel away. Where did the money Rosetta earned go? Why did she flee to her parents' house in a t-shirt carrying Daniel in a snowstorm? My usually silent father-in-law suddenly began to cry and loudly blamed the mother-in-law. I'm truly sorry. We'll make sure to make amends for spoiling him and causing Rosetta such pain. Rima spoke to us, then Sigma the lawyer. Just pay what you owe. We'll cut all direct contact with you and inform our relatives. After that, I resigned from my part-time job, informing the headquarters about the mother-in-law's interference. The company apologized. While I never heard about any punishment for the mother-in-law's acquaintance, I was told they'd ensure no power imbalances among part-timers. A few weeks later, my divorce from Andy was finalized. I won custody of Daniel and received a fair amount of child support. The mother-in-law couldn't afford the land rent, so Andy had to cover it. But with the divorce settlement and child support, he struggled to pay. If he continues, they might have to vacate and demolish their house. Grandma joked, if the house is gone, the land will sell for more. Now I'm living with my parents, cherishing the time with Daniel. My father runs a company and I plan to work there once Daniel is older. I'm using the divorce settlement to buy new clothes, enjoying coordinating outfits with Daniel. I look forward to spending even more time with him in the future.